Hello and welcome to today's episode of Socially Distant Discover Nature. So it's a new format now, so I'm going to be reporting on the actual Discover Nature groups that met back for the first time in about seven months last Tuesday. The main thing we saw in Discover Nature was fungi, and as I don't know a great deal about fungi, this is going to be quite a short video. What I can tell you about fungi is they are not plants or animals. If we look at the classification of all living things, all life on Earth, they're divided up at the highest level, well, almost the highest level, into kingdoms. So, Animalia is one kingdom, unsurprisingly, that contains animals. Everything you know as an animal is in there. Then there's Planty, kingdom of the plants, again, obvious, contains the plants. And Fungi are in their separate kingdom, Kingdom Fungi, which contains mushrooms, toadstools, other strange types of fungi that you might see out and about on local nature reserves or growing in your lawn or garden. Depending on what scientific research you look at or what source you look at, there are varying numbers of kingdoms. The one that we'll go to today is five kingdoms. So we've got plants, animals, fungi. There's another one that used to be called Protoctista or now more commonly Protista. This contains lots of strange single-celled unicellular creatures like amoeba, plasmodium, very weird. Sometimes I feel like it's a little bit of a miscellaneous category. Don't worry too much about that today. And then the other one, we've got the prokaryotes, which is the bacteria. So these are organisms with cells that do not contain a nucleus. So there you have it, fungi are not plants or animals. They are something different. And this is reflected in their structure. We know plants and animals are made up of cells, so that's like your base unit for building. Plants and animals, a little sort of blob with a nucleus containing genetic information. Lots of um, cell scientists shouting at me now because I've really dumbed that down. Because I do not know! Getting pretty bright now. Fungi. Their basic building blocks is somewhat different. They're made up of hyphae, which are very small, microscopic, tube-like structures composed of chitin. I think it's the same material in um, exoskeletons of invertebrates. So yeah, little tiny tube-like things, uh, hyphae, many nuclei, many bits of blobs of genetic material, and they sort of weave together to form a vast network which is known as mycelium and then that forms the structure of the fungus. It is, it is worth saying that when I talk about the structure of the fungus, what we think of fungus is actually the fruiting body. So it's not there necessarily all the time. If you think of your classic fairy tale mushroom known as the fly agaric, Amanita muscari, I think. We'll put the Latin name on screen probably. So yeah, that wonderful red and white toadstool is the fruiting body of the Amanita fungus, but the bulk of that fungus is a mycelial network, a network of these hyphae hidden underground. And it's only when the fruiting body pops up and I get blinded by the sun that we notice it. And the whole point of the fruiting body is for reproductive purposes. The purpose the purpose of the fruiting body is to spread spores, the little tiny base reproductive units that will scatter to the winds, very lightweight, and then will hopefully sprout new fungi elsewhere. There's quite a diversity of lifestyles for fungi. They do all sorts of different things. Some of them are saprophytic, so they are feeding on dead or decaying or dying stuff often um, plants, yeah. So for instance, one of the fungi we spotted in this section was jelly ear, and this seems to have an association with elder trees, but also some other hardwood species as well, and it's on the dying, dead, decaying elder trees. It's a saprophyte. The way the fungi eat is pretty interesting, uh, pretty disgusting potentially, they sort of excrete enzymes, break stuff down outside the body of the hyphae, the mycelium, and then absorb up those nutrients. Delicious. 
I talked about the fruiting body having a sole purpose of distributing spores, and this is really seen with the other fungus that we saw, the Earth Star. That's the one with a little puffy globe that you can poke, and it fires a cloud of spores out. That is the, the ultimate aim. The other fungus that we found, I can't quite work out what it is. I think it belongs to the Romaria genus, which has got sort of many branching coral-like structures. Posted on iSpot, so I had a few agreements that it is Romaria, but as for the species, not a clue. Nonetheless, it's very good to see it. And speaking of identifying fungi, what you will need to get yourself probably is this book. Very, very useful. See, Romaria is on here, probably can't see that in focus, but it's a very useful book for identification purposes. I'm in no way qualified to give you an ID lesson on fungi, but I can give you a few different types of shapes and structures that you can look out when you're walking around. Really, your classic one is the mushroom toadstool shape, which has got a cap and stalk and there's gill versions of this, so if you look underneath it, it's kind of like, well, gills. How to describe the gills? Sort of very narrow partitions, like little walls on the inside, underside of the cap. That's one to look out for. Slightly different, uh, but a similar shape is a, a bolete. So this looks like, again, a chunky mushroom shape that has been carved out of sponge. Looks really spongy, like a sort of comedy child's toy version. A foam, foam version of a mushroom, which you might use in a game show for hitting people in a non-violent or non-lethal way. Getting a bit carried away with that one. Yeah, bolete. Chunky, spongy, but still kind of toadstool shaped. There are plenty of fungi out there that have spherical parts to them, so you might have puffballs. We've discussed the earth stars, which are very, very distinct. And a really common one that you can see in many types of woodland are bracket fungi. So these, well, do what they say on the name. They're kind of like shelf brackets that have been put onto the tree. Then you've got some weird things like stink horns that if you look very closely, they seem to resemble a I could go on and on, the diversity of fungi is incredible, but I urge you to go out, see it, enjoy it, um, take biological records, send in some photos, let us know what you're finding, and definitely don't eat any of it. So that's it for today's Socially Distant Discover Nature. I've got a bumblebee entering the studio, so I will probably have to get that out. So, until next time. Goodbye.